Hey, it's Dave Dolphin at practicalworshiplog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. Today, giving you a tour of our electric guitar position here at the church. Now, one of the things I should probably mention up front is that we provide all the back line for the instrument positions here at the church. So that's pretty common to maybe have a drum set that you have all of the drummers use. Um, it might actually be pretty common to have a church keyboard that all the keyboard players use. But when it, when it comes to the electric guitar player position, it's pretty unusual to say, hey, we own the pedals and we own the amp and we want you to play that. But we do that for three reasons. One of them being consistency. We can swap out different players weekend to weekend and still maintain the same sound because we have the same gear. Now, I know different players are going to bring different nuances, different techniques to the instrument, just like uh, uh, different drummers are going to play the same drum kit differently, and it's going to have different nuances. But by and large, having the same gear here allows us to have a consistent sound from weekend to weekend. Number two uh, being that it does eliminate the time wasters, uh, at least a lot of them, when it comes to rehearsal. You're not, you know, if you're bringing in um, different gear and different pedals and amps and things like that every single weekend, you know, it eliminates the spending 30 minutes trying to figure out where a hum is coming from, only to find out that some boutique pedal that a guy got in a different country doesn't like the lights. It's happened. Number three is that it opens up uh, possibilities for younger players, maybe those in your student ministry, youth ministry, even adults who don't necessarily have the budget for pro gear, but they have the chops. You provide an avenue that they can play and you're not strapped to their budget. They still have access to pro gear, uh, even if they can't afford it. So we'll start here at the pedal board. Now, uh, our vision for this was that we wanted something that was simple enough that if you weren't familiar with it, you could start playing with it and get up and running pretty quickly and not be uh, swimming in a sea of pedals and whatnot. But it needed to be complex enough that it had all the tools and textures and tones and things you would need to play our style of music. And so this is what we arrived at. And uh, when we were putting this together, uh, we enlisted the help of our current players and they got to to speak into this quite a bit because if you're going to ask someone to play uh, you know gear that's not their own especially a guitar player we want to make sure that they had input and uh, were able to speak into the decisions and so we did that but we also uh, reached out to some guitar players some well-respected guitar players here in the area uh, to help put this together so after all that research uh, we arrived at this. Um, let's talk about signal flow. Uh, this is the Ernie Ball ver volume pedal, and we do start with that first for no other reason than it's just easier to get to that jack um, as far as plugging your guitar in. And we mainly use the volume pedal for like swells and stuff like that, so it works fine for us. Uh, that goes into the compressor. Uh, the MXR compressor, and then that goes into the polytune. Again, the reason the tuner is like two or three deep is, is just placement on the board. And uh, the cool thing about the polytune, if you haven't seen this, is that not only can you like strum a certain string and, and get a tune on that, but you can also strum all of the strings on your guitar and get a real quick check of where you are. So you can strum all the strings, and then if you see one's out of tune, you can go for that one, which is pretty cool. Uh, after the polytune, uh, we go to our two drives here. Uh, the main drive we use is the Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive, and I love how this sounds. There's just, there's nothing else like it, and I really think it's a pretty, pretty drive. Uh, but we also have this booster here, this EP booster, and so um, this gives it a little bit of a crunch. That gives us a, a lot more crunch, and then together um, gives us uh, a lot of crunch, so it gives you three levels of drive. Now that goes into this M9 here that we are using strictly for uh, delays and reverbs. And the way we have this set up is uh, we, have, we treat it like six different textures and we don't variate from these six very often, if at all. Uh, the top row is uh, generally for lead style playing. So that's why you have your dotted eighth notes. Uh, you got a swelly delay and you got like a huge verb uh, for you know, textures and things like that. And then if you're playing more rhythm style parts, uh, that's where the rhythm eight delay comes in or the quarter note delay or the small verb, which is like a springy uh, amp type reverb. And the cool thing about this is that, uh, and this, if, if I have a player that I tell them, hey, I want you to come play, but you have to use our gear and they're, they're not sure about it. When I tell them this one thing, this usually seals the deal. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, this right here is a MIDI cable that comes from our Ableton Live rig. We run tracks, which means the songs have set tempos, and that MIDI cable 
is setting the, the tempos for the delays. And so you can tap if you want to, but you don't have to. They're automatically set. And when the new song comes on in the, in, you know, in the series of songs you're doing, it resets the, the tempos for the delays and you never have to tap them, which is pretty awesome. The final stop on the board is uh, this radial SGI box. This is what we use to run the signal back to the amp because we got about 40 feet to go uh, to get to the amp, which is uh, backstage. And there's a matching box on the other end uh, that takes this, uh, this uh, mic cord um, and, and transfers it back to um, something that the amp would like. And these radio boxes do a really good job. If you need to get your amps off stage or in a different room, they've worked really well for us. All right, next stop is the amp. Let's go check that out. So backstage is where we keep the electric guitar amp, and here's the other uh, SGI box that receives uh, this microphone signal and then transfers it into uh, back into what you'd expect a guitar to be uh, sending and then sends that back into the amp. Uh, this is the AC15. Uh, it's a C1. It is a tube amp. It's not solid state. We have not done any mods to it. Uh, we haven't uh, changed out the speakers or anything like that. This is pretty much fresh out of the box. And uh, there's just nothing like the, the, the natural drive that comes from a Vox amp. Just when with no drive pedals on at all and you just you crunch the amp just a little bit, what the tubes provide is really, really pretty and uh, we really like it a lot. Now you might notice this amp that is over here. Uh, this is also a Vox amp, but this is, um, it's actually got uh, two speakers in it and it is solid state. Uh, we use this purely for backup. So this is um, for those situations where 10 minutes before service, you blow a tube or something just doesn't sound right. Uh, we can very quickly take this cable and plug it into here and with minimal fuss, still be able to carry on the service. Now, uh, this is not an amp that we necessarily picked out. This just happened to be something that we found backstage in our student area. It's probably not one that I would have picked for myself, but something is better than nothing. And um, I'm a big believer in redundancy and because if it, if it can fail, it will fail. Now we do allow our electric guitar players to play their own guitars for two reasons. One, that's a pretty intimate relationship between a person and their electric guitar, just naturally knowing where frets are and things like that. So we understand that. But also two, uh, some sets and some songs call for different guitars. For example, a song might call for a Strat, if you're playing like real chinky 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 up here. Uh, other songs might call for a PRS, something that's a little bit more meaty. And so uh, we've been known to switch out guitars based on sets and sometimes even songs. Uh, but we did want to have a guitar that was church owned for those cases where you've got uh, someone in the youth group that has a hundred dollar guitar, really good chops, but a really bad sounding guitar. We have something that they can use and play. It's going to have quality sound. Uh, we're going to get good audio out of it and still be able to utilize that person. So um, we have a Fender Telecaster. This is an American Tele. And um, I like that it has the different kinds of pickups here. Um, and you can switch between those. Uh, it's, it's a real jack of all trades type guitar. We wanted something that if we're gonna have one guitar, how much coverage, how many different styles can we cover with that one guitar? So uh, if you need something that's kind of bright, bright sounding, um, you got a pickup for that. If you need something that's a little bit more meatier, you have that as well. And it's just a really pretty sounding guitar. So that's a quick tour of our electric guitar player position here at the church. Again, if you have any questions about any of the gear that you've seen, check out the description below and there's links provided there. Hey, thanks for watching. Here at Practical Worship, we love sharing ideas and tips and practical advice for the everyday worship leader with videos just like this one. So if this was helpful, hit that like button that tells YouTube that this was helpful and gets it in front of more and more people and gets the information out there. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. That way when new videos come online here at YouTube, you'll be notified right away. And also, if you know someone that might benefit from this information, consider sharing it on social media, on Facebook and Twitter and places like that. And for more great practical advice, check out practicalworshipblog.com. <laughs> I'm too old for this.